Success Insight shares the stories of the people with passion and drive who make things happen in the world. Here's your host, Howard Fox. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Success Insight podcast. Our guest today is Nina Sassaman Pogue. Nina is the CEO of NSP Communications. She is a respected keynote speaker on resilience, adversity, and achievement. She is an expert on resilience, and she researches and writes about how highly successful individuals and companies get from adversity to achievement. She is also the best-selling author of the book, This Is Not the End, Strategies to Get Through the Worst Chapters of Your Life. Nina, it is a pleasure to have you on the Success Insight Podcast. Well, it is a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, Nina, this whole idea of resilience It is very timely as we are here today chatting about this new book that has just come out. We are in the midst of a crisis, a healthcare crisis, a global healthcare crisis for that matter. But I would imagine this topic of resilience has preceded this crisis that we're in today. So I wonder if you could provide our listeners with a little bit of background and why this topic is so near and dear to your heart. Yeah, I would be happy to do so. So I've had a very storied past, and I'll share with that with you in a moment to tell you more than just the highs in my career, but the lows that really made me the person that I am today. And this topic of resilience is really key right now during this pandemic, but it's also something that I've been fascinated with for years. So the timing of my book was a little odd that it came out at this time, but also very fortuitous because I feel like it's helped a lot of people along the way. We actually made it 99 cents. People can just grab it. I bought it today, by the way. It's on Kindle. I, I, everything is Kindle these days for me. I love it. Yeah. So on your Kindle or your Apple Reader or your Nook, you can get it for 99 cents. But this topic, resilience, there's also books on grit and books on persistence. And you hear these language both in business and in personal goals and in athletes all the time. And right now in the news and in the world and across the globe, you're not hearing those words. The words you're hearing right now, the word is resilience or resilient. And the key, the piece to that that's so key for what we're all going through right now, and the piece that's so much a big part of my history is the difference between that. So persistence, you got to go hard, you got to do more, get up and go again, pick up and keep running, do what you're doing, but do it better. And with this, you can't do that. There's no way we could just keep doing what we've been doing, but do it more and better and harder. We have to make a change. The word resilience is about that piece of change when you face adversity. So resilience is your ability to learn from adversity, to grow stronger, to adapt in a positive way to whatever change is going on. If you look just at the definition of it, that explains why it is working right now. Because none of us got up on January 1st and said, hey, my goal for 2020 is let's survive a pandemic. We all, you know, we we all had different goals and none of us are doing right now what we thought we were going to be doing. Everyone has had to make changes. So the word resilience is about how you handle those changes and you go in a different direction and you find a positive way out of whatever situation that you're in. That is what resilience is. In my life story, when I back up and share that, I was a member of the U.S. gymnastics team. I was a gymnast at LSU, one of the top recruits in the NCAA. I was a reporter and an Emmy-winning news anchor, and I was in tech, and I was part of a leadership team, and we had one of the most successful IPOs of 2013. Just great stuff if you looked at my resume. If you go to LinkedIn, that's what you're going to see. Now, my book is not about that. My book is about I was on the U.S. team, and I didn't make the Olympics. And that was devastating. And then I went and I was the top college recruit. And then I blew out my knee in college and lost my sport and had to redefine myself and figure out who I was. Then I became a reporter and a very successful and popular, if you want to call it, news anchor. And then I was let go in a budget cut where they just went through and cut people across the nation. And then I worked my way back up again. And then I was involved in a really devastating accident where for a while there, I didn't even know if I wanted to go on because it was it was involving a small child and myself. And we'll talk about that later. But that that heavy, heavy grief that came with that, I, I didn't even want to go on for a while. But I did. And I redefined myself. And I went, then I got into tech and I had great success there. So I have had this life of real high highs and real low lows. And I've had them all very publicly because I was a very public person. And nowadays, everybody's public because everything's on Facebook and LinkedIn and out there on your feed. So this book is about how do you handle 
the really tough stuff that life can throw at you. Those big life-changing events that take you from who you're defined as to someone new and come out of it stronger on the other side. I got fascinated with that. And that's what I write about. And that's what I research and talk on. I love how you shared as an open book, some of your history. And for someone like me, we we hear these stories anecdotally that so-and-so didn't make it, or they, you know, just on the cusp of greatness, something happened. And, And I have to say, it's refreshing to actually have someone here on the show talking about that and and what it meant and how they have overcome that challenge, that adversity. I am curious, though, about the word resilience. Do you see resilience? Is it one size fits all or are there different shades uh, of gray when it comes to talking about resilience? Because the event required you in some shape or fashion to tap into perhaps the resilience that maybe you didn't even know existed, but you found it and you overcame that adversity. But do you see, is it one size fits all or is there different shades of gray when it comes to it? I love this question so much. I'm so glad you asked it. All of us in life, there's no one that's listening, not you, not me, not anyone who's listening to this, who hasn't overcome something, you know, whether it's bad traffic you had to get through on the really every day, what I call, I call the adversities in your life, your this is, there's the lower cage, this, T-H-I-S, you, someone stops you on your way to wherever you're headed and you have to deal with that conversation before you can get to where you're going or you do have traffic or just something that gets in your way of your plan that day. You're in a big meeting and your kids' school calls, whatever. Those are your everyday this is. Then you have your capital T this is, capital T HIS is. And those are, it's the busiest part of your season. Maybe you're in sales, it's your selling season and you break your leg. And now it's harder to travel. It's harder to get around. It changes your plans or you have a really bad quarter or you lose a really big customer. Your key client goes with somebody else and you have to make a change. You have to fill that gap. You have to go in a new direction. Um, All of those are your capital T this is. And then there's the all caps this is. The big T-H-I-S, all caps, this is. And that is some of the things that I mentioned in my story that, you know, not, you know, spending years towards a goal and not making that goal. Going through a divorce uh, could be one of these. Losing your job, having your company go under. Those are the big this is that take your life in a whole new direction and start a new chapter. And when you talk about the different, like one size fits all, what's really fascinating about resilience, and there's a lot of research on it, and there's some different lines of thinking, but most people agree that you could come from hardy stock, shall we say, but for the most part, people are not born resilient. You don't come out that way. How you handle all the little this is and the stuff that happens in your life as you go through life, how you come back, builds that resilience. It's like a muscle. So when I'm talking to companies or corporations and I say, you know, if you haven't had to go through any tough times or if you have a whole team of humans, you keep hiring people who've had charmed lives and haven't dealt with much. When something big happens, you're going to have a hard time. You need people and you need the skills to manage failure. That's why I always say hire athletes. Athletes are coachable. They know like, if they something goes wrong, you switch gears and you go a new direction. They fall, they get up and keep going. They understand game plans change and strategies change and they will go with the flow. So that resilience is not one size fits all. People come at it from different histories, different historical um, backgrounds where they've had to do more or come through hard knocks or you know, go through some adversity. And the more you go through, often the stronger you are. It's why I think I was able to, when the company was going public, stand there in NASDAQ in New York and run around and do that pre-IPO work when other people were crumbling and like grown men were going, ah, this is crazy. I was like, hey, we got this. Come on, power through. It just wasn't phasing me. So that resilience is built over time. And the more we flex that muscle, the easier it is. And we have a whole generation and a whole society now where we've taken a lot of that out. You don't have to, you know, stand in line. Well, back when we could stand in line, you didn't have to stand in line for very long for things. You know, we can just order it and have it delivered to our door and we don't have to cook meals. We can just order that and have it delivered, or we can order it partially chopped up where you don't have to measure, or you can just, you know, there's all sorts of ways you can deal with it get it frozen and stop popping in your microwave. Just, we've taken a lot of the work out of life, the things that were challenges before, and that has made all of our, all of us a little less resilient. And this current pandemic is making everyone more resilient because everyone is managing through change right now. Everyone is figuring out a way to do things differently. So that is really going to be an interesting thing to look back on in time when we're way past this. When you were the athlete, when you were the uh, 
you know, executive, when you were the the reporter, did this stage that you went through? Okay, there's this event, and there's a, then there's the resilience that you have to tap into. Did that come completely from just the experience of being a world class athlete? H- had there been a, a mentor, a guide? Because the reason why I'm asking that, I mean, I've been a I'm a weekend athlete. In, if that, okay, <laughs> if that, um, one of my downsides is I, I work from home right now and I, I don't go outside. Not very good. Mm-hmm. So someone who is all of a sudden having to tap into some aspect of resilience, how do they begin to understand this is something I need to care about and do something about and tap into ways to overcome how I'm feeling in the moment. Yeah, it's not an easy thing to do, depending on how big of a this it is. Your whatever you're going through is your this. That's why the book is called This Is Not The End. It's your this. Whatever it is you're going through is different for each of us. And what you tap into in those moments are different. But adversity is very much tied to levels of grief. So when we go through a big change, we have a plan for our lives and it goes in another direction. Um, If we were working towards something and it doesn't work, there's levels of grief and there's stages of grief. And uh, especially in this current situation that we're in, I, I think we're in this collective grief throughout the globe right now, all over the world at different times. And and since grief isn't linear, people are going back and forth to it, the different stages. So there's first piece of grief is denial. Like, oh, this isn't really happening. This isn't affecting me. But the pandemic, we're all like, well, it's not really going to hit my neighborhood. Like, it's not going to make me change what I have to do. And then there's anger. Wait, you're canceling my sports. I have to work from home. Those anger pieces. And then there was a bargaining. We all did that. Okay. If we stay home for two weeks just a few weeks and we all behave, then we can go back out and play. You know, we all did the bargaining piece. And then there's the sadness that comes with grief. And that can be, I'm sad that I can't do what I was going to do. I'm sad that I had plans I can't go do. I'm sad that I'm I'm worried about people and losing them. I'm sad for friends who are missing out or doing whatever. Um, Like I have a college graduate who's not graduating this year. I'm sad for him. So we all have different things we're sad for. And that's a piece of grief. And sometimes you go from sad back to angry again, and you pop around. But then the last piece of grief is acceptance. And acceptance, as you might imagine, is where the power is. The quicker you can bounce around in those and get to acceptance and go, okay, this is my new reality. This is happening. I get it. I have to make a change. And as soon as you get to acceptance, you can go, what can I do? I can wash my hands. I can stay home. I can learn to do a Zoom call. I can learn like all the things that people are doing right now. I can uh, uh, figure out how to shop without going to the grocery store and get things delivered. Whatever it is we're doing, we're all adjusting and becoming more resilient because we've gotten to the acceptance piece uh, and we're moving forward. Now, some people, when you asked the, the question was, you know, how do you get there? depending on how big it is or what people's background is, some people get there to the acceptance faster than others. So the people who are really resilient get to that acceptance piece, start owning it and making plans for the future, doing, you know, taking control of what they can control and making, you know, making good choices for what they want the outcome to be on the other side, even though they're not in control of everything, they have an assessment of what they can control. Okay. In the book, are you walking the the reader through this model? And, and, and by the way, for the, our listeners and the uh, the model Nina has shared with you, it's actually a, a, a very famous model, Elizabeth uh, Kubler-Ross. That was the, the model you just shared, and we'll provide a link back to it. But of course, I imagine it's it's going to be in the book as well. So you got to buy the book too. Talk to us about the book. When did you first decide there's a book in me and I need to share this story and why it's so important? When did that kind of come out? Yeah, well, I I found my last few years in my corporate job. So I was a vice president in a a high growth software company with public and we were growing and growing. And I found the last few years, I kept getting people booking things on my calendar, booking a sink on my calendar. And it was people I wasn't, didn't know well. And they, you know, come and then they'd say, I just wanted to sit down. I heard you were good. I'm dealing with something really tough. And can you help me figure this out? And then I'd have somebody in my neighborhood come knock on the door. It'd be some man in his forties from down the street and go, Hey, Nina, you know me with a cup of coffee, you know, you know me, you know, my wife and kids. Like I just got let go. I don't even know what to do. How do I restart? And then my own kids were old enough to head off to college. And I wanted to be able to tell them what it is that I knew because I knew I was helping people. I knew that I could get people to a better place and get them into an optimistic state of mind and making good choices for their future. I just didn't know exactly what that was that I had. 
And so I decided as my kids grew up and went, went off that I wanted to be able to write it down somehow. And so I worked to, with a group and we to organize these thoughts and f- did some real thinking and some real research to figure out what it is that I did know. Because during my life, I had read so many different books and had so much other advice people had given me. And some of it's a little bit of stoicism, a little Ryan Holiday in there. There's some cognitive behavioral therapy. There's some religion. There's some Buddhism. I took a little Lakota Indian, earth, wind. I mean, it's all, I'm kind of all over the place. I don't use any of the words like prefrontal cortex or cognitive behavioral therapy or stuff. I don't use any of that. I just share with you. Okay. You're in the middle of this right now. Let me get you to the other side. Let me just get you to the other side of this really horrible piece that you're in right now, because that's the book I was looking for back then. I just wanted to pick up a book that said, I don't know how to go forward and I don't even want to go forward. Somebody tell me what to do. Cause I, I'm just stuck. Like I'm, I'm really scared and lost and kind of want to just end it. And I needed a book that just said, okay, here we go. I got you. Here's some steps things you can do to actions you can take. Cause I'm not just a sit and think happy thoughts person. I needed actions I could take to make myself get past it. And so that's what this book is. I stood in a Barnes and Noble and I looked at the bookshelves and there were big books on PTSD therapies and workbooks and other people's stories. And of course I bought them and I got through some of them, but I wanted a little book that just said, let me just walk you through it. So my book is about you. I talk to you as the reader and I talk as if I'm a mentor because that's how it's written. It's from my perspective. It's just like if you came over and knocked on my door, we'd sit on the end of my dock and we would have these conversations and I would tell you the books I read and the way I think and some other ways to think about whatever you're going through and get you through it. That's the way this book is written. By the way, just the idea of sitting on the end of the dock with a, whether it's an adult beverage or, you know, I'm a morning (laughs) guy, so I love a nice cup of coffee. Yes. And I think I could get into that. By the way, and I want to introduce you to Kellyanne McKnight. She is a a friend of mine from, from the coaching profession. She wrote a book called The Resilience Way. She had lost her husband a couple of years ago to, to cancer. And then she was trying to come to terms with that. And she started to delve into kind of like, you know, the how you just shared some of these stories, somebody at work, the neighbor down the street, and started to capture stories of resilience and different ways people cope with it. So I think that'd be a great conversation uh, that you ought to have. And because Kelly's wonderful and you're wonderful. So, you know, part of my secret sauce is I love connecting people. So that's As you were talking about that, I was thinking, Kelly. I will definitely reach out. So, you know, you kind of alluded to some of the stories from work, the the neighbor, the folks that you are coming across that are reading the book. What are they saying about it? Well, it's been really fascinating. The heavy story that I don't, um, for the first time I've shared it, it was 15 years ago. I was very popular, as I said, if you want to call it that kind of big fish, little pond, but I was a news anchor and had been a news anchor in our community for a long time. I had gone to pick up my son from school one day and I was in the the crowded bus stop and I'd taken the car. We were going to go run errands. So we get there and the kids all pile off and my car, my son jumps in and there's lots of moms and kids and babies and people of all ages, you know, my son jumps in the car and we go to leave. And in the midst of all of that, no one had noticed that a baby, a friend's baby had crawled onto the driveway and I backed up. So I went from being this woman who was very popular and optimistic and former world-class athlete and Emmy winning news anchor to this person who had run over a baby. Now, fast forward 15 years, he lived, he survived, our community survived. I went back on the air and I managed through it, but I was a very public figure and to go through something like that, it was a very difficult time. I talk about that in the book and how you like it, it, I didn't want it to be part of my story. I, I I didn't I didn't see any way I could go on with life with now this being part of my story. And we didn't know if he would live or die. There was months there where it was really touch and go. So I was really in a dark place. And I think it's really important to share those types of things in the setting we're in right now because people need to know that even in the really darkest moments we do get to the other side. The the best learning I can take from it, and I've kind of gotten off your question, but I do want to share the best learning I can take from that is here I am 15 years on the other side of it. And at the time, and the things that I share in the book, it's what was going through my head at the time when I just wanted to end it. And it really was difficult. By the way, let me stop you one second. When you say end it, you actually mean end it. 
Yeah, I was very, I was suicidal. I wanted okay. to just step into traffic. I didn't want to go back on the air on TV and everybody look at me. Certainly not that. So I was really in a bad place and mm-hmm. I had some good help. And I, who knew that I needed to marry a man with a psych degree. So I was, had a husband who helped me through it. The second marriage was a good one. <laughs> um, good for you. So, so uh, yeah, the, the people around me helped. I got some good help. I talk about that in the book. I walk people through the different steps, but the really heavy stuff um, and people in 2020 are going to lose loved ones. They're going to lose jobs. They are going to be in a desperate state. They're going to be going through no, some despair. So you asked what, feedback I've been getting because I share that in a very raw way in the book. And I share all the crazy that was going on in my head. People have identified with it a lot. And they have called me and said, wow, this has really helped me right now. Like, I just needed to hear the way you think. Like, wow, I really am five years from now going to be sitting, grabbing a beer with my friends and be telling everybody, this was my pandemic 2020 story. What was yours? Just like we tell 9-11 stories now. You know, where were you during 9-11? Everybody has that story. You know, where were you in the pandemic of 2020? Well, you're you're going to get there and you're going to have a story. It doesn't seem like it when you're in the middle of it. And so I can share that perspective. And that's been really comforting. My favorite story from anybody who's read it was actually before the pandemic. I met this guy at a bar uh, out when I was, uh, this is not going anywhere uh, where you think it might be, but <laughs> I was with a lot of friends and I was met this guy at this bar and he knew I'd written this book as we were talking about it. And we started chatting and he, you know, said something. And one of my friends said, Oh, you got to read your book and gave him the card. We were in a big group and then I didn't think much of it. And uh, we were in Charlotte, North Carolina. And then two days later, I got a text because in my book had my business card was part of, you know, the book launch had my business card. And in the, you know, two days later, I got a text and who I did not know this and none of us knew, but he was uh, going through a divorce and his job was not going well. And he said, on my way back to New York, I read your book. And for the first time in 18 months, I feel like I don't want, I actually want to get up in the morning. And that type of response, even if one or two people get that from it. I feel like I've done the right thing by putting it out there. Most definitely. Most definitely. And how are you putting this work into practice today? I mean, you chatted early and I know we, I said this in the introduction, uh, you're very much public person in the work that you've done. You're the, the uh, keynote speaker talking about resilience, the adversity achievement. In addition to the speaking, because uh, by the way, I am like, uh, I love doing this, but to put me in front of a stage, like a TED stage or something, TEDx stage, I, <laughs> no, no, thank you. Well, after 20 years on air, three shows a day, I'm, I can go anywhere. You, you, you yeah. Can, yeah, this is like, you got this. Yeah. How are you now using this, this kind of this goal, this, these nuggets of wisdom, insights, brilliance, how are you using this beyond just speaking from the stage. Because, I mean, I, you can you can stand up on the stage. You've got your PowerPoint. In fact, you don't even need a PowerPoint. You can just go up there and chat. You know, people are going to buy the book. They're going to they're gonna ask for the signature. They're going to say, this was great. How are you then going out as, you know, Nina Sossaman Poe, going out and putting this work into practice for people that need it? Well, first, thank you for saying all those kind of things about the work that I am doing. I do feel like I'm trying to make a difference. Uh, this is early on for me. So the book came out. It actually wasn't even supposed to be released till August. We moved it up because of the pandemic. Um, the keynote speaking has been my first check the box. Let's get out there and, and talk about this in a real, real way. And so I had several of those going. It was going strong before the pandemic. No big stages to stand on right now. So I've been doing virtual keynotes. Uh, I had one today with a women in leadership and philanthropy group, and we had a huge virtual audience. And several people afterwards said, wow, that really helped me. So thank you. Um, I'm actually working on my second book because it was a two book deal that I was working on. So the second book is really aimed at the business piece of it the intersection of your personal and professional resilience and from a career standpoint, how resilient we are and why companies need to build resilient teams. So the second book is in the works. And then I do have plans. I I really would love to do workshops in the future. I've done some workshops and for for companies and corporations, I do half day workshops uh, for them. One of them is really fun. It's a superhero workshop. And yes, I mix DC and the Marvel universe and it really ticks people off, but it's so much fun. It's super geeky. Um, It's really fun to do at tech companies. 
but yeah, so I do some workshopping and that's a neat piece of it. And then I do plan to hold some retreats and do weekend retreats or some retreat work for folks as well. Uh, we had several of those planned for this year and those have been put on hold, obviously, until we know uh, what the you know future travel looks like. So right now, that's my only plans. Uh, I do put a lot of my, what I'm working on and saying and thinking out on social media. And so I put sorts of nuggets out there that aren't anywhere else that, that hit me. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's what I'm, where I'm trying to spread the word right now. But again, it's early on and I, I, I know the platform has a lot of opportunities and, and I've talked with a lot of folks about where I might go with it. But right now, uh, that's where I am. Fantastic. And if you were to give some insight or nugget really to some of the folks that all of a sudden, maybe they haven't lost their job. I mean, the, my conversation before this podcast was about careers, job loss. How do you recover from this? What do you do? But perhaps the people who, you know, they were used to being in an office doing their work and this new reality means, yeah, you might have your job, but you might never be working in an office again. That adds different kinds of implications, especially if you're young, you've got kids and things like that. What kind of advice from your repertoire of, of, of experience would you give to the folks who are realizing things are different and they need to tap into that resilience that maybe they didn't know they have? Yeah. And for all those folks who are homeschooling and doing all of that, more power to you. I'm so glad my kids are off in college. <laughs> you know, now I, I just have to worry about them coming home and drinking all my beer. So it's a little different. <laughs> but for the folks who are there and who are in a bad spot, one of the things that I do in the book and the way the cover looks like it does and the way the language is throughout the book is I talk about you're writing your own story. So you are writing your own story. And the book says the end, like it's a typewriter writing. This is not the end the cover of it. So for everyone who's listening, and if you're in a bad spot, picture the book of your life. What does the book of your life look like? Is it a hardback, big, heavy hardback? Is it a softback? Is it a quick reader? Is it um, maybe Harry Potter and lots of volumes? Or maybe it's a children's book. Like, What does the book of your life look like? And what color is the cover of your book? Picture that. Now open that book to today. Maybe it's a really crappy day or maybe you're having a good day. I don't know, but open that book to today. You're on a page in your book. If you are young and in your 20s, you're more towards the beginning of your book. If you're in your 50s like me, you're in the middle of your book. It's just the middle, it's the middle of the book. And if you are you know, later in life, um, your 80s maybe, then maybe you have more seasons and more chapters you've already gone through. So where are you in your book? You're on a page today. What's neat about this initially is now you and I are, Having we're both on each, in each other's books today. We're having a little crossover moment. It's like when Supergirl and The Flash are on the same episode. You know, we're having this crossover moment in our books. But in, <laughs> <laughs> but in your book, we're all on a page. This is our page. We're all on as we're listening to this. And everything that you've done till now has brought you up to this page. And then all those pages ahead, they're blank. And you're going to decide what goes in those books, pandemic or not. You're going to decide what goes in those pages of their book. This is just one chapter. All those pages are blank and you are going to decide the language. So are you safe at home or are you stuck at home? What's the language that you're using? What you say in your head comes out of your mouth and comes back to becomes your story. When you get let go, when somebody calls, are you super mad? And so-and-so was not, didn't work as hard as me. And my boss, Carl is a jerk. And like, is that what you're saying? Or are you picking up the phone and going, wow, I didn't see that coming. Hard time for everybody. If you know of anybody who's looking, you know, hiring, I'm looking. Is that your story? Your language in your head comes out of your mouth and it becomes your story. That becomes your story five years from now when you're hanging out, having that pizza and, and or having a beer and have, where, what is your pandemic story? The image of your book and the thought that you are writing, you're choosing the language and putting these things out into your book is really key when you're in a bad spot. And the most important thing about that book imagery is this is just one chapter. This is not your whole book. You've got a big giant book and lots of chapters ahead, good chapters ahead, exciting ones, sad ones, hard ones, fun ones. All those chapters are still coming. They're still going to come. You're in the middle of a really crappy one right now, and you're going to make changes and choices and choose language. So if you're in, my your example, if you're in that job where you're sitting at home and you really don't like being at home, you're going to find something else when the world starts hiring again and we have other options. You'll find something else. You won't be at home forever. If that's what your business decides to do and you go, I am not working from home. 
I love my family, but enough of them. I need to get out in the world. You will find something else. You're going to decide what goes in those pages. No one's going to decide more than you. You're the CEO of you. As you can listen to all those podcasts, you're going to make those decisions, set a vision, look at your resources, go in that direction. But that language piece is really key. And for everyone who's in a tough spot, this is just one chapter. For some of you, it's going to be a really tough one. For others, it's just going to be this weird chapter where you had to work from just like odd, but it's just one chapter and other chapters are ahead. Fantastic. And, you know, I, and I really want to thank you and for our listeners. What Nina's just shared, this metaphor of the book. I mean, somewhere back in my coaching education, a metaphor like that was introduced. And, and it's just, there's different ways to look at the metaphor, going up the elevator or with a glass. And it's kind of seeing how things are changing. But I love the idea of this book in this chapter. And I'm going to... Uh, start to lift that a little bit for my own coaching clients. And I will give you full credit. You're welcome to have it. And if it helps at all. <laughs> you can count on that. You can count on that. Nina, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you join us on the Success Insight podcast today. And for our listeners, if they would like to learn more about you and your work, where are the best places for them to go? Well, you can go to my website. It's ninasossamanpogue.com. And that's N-I-N-A-S-O-S-S-A-M-O-N-P-O-G-U-E.com. It's a mouthful, but that's it. And then there's an author page there. You can learn more about the book or you can learn more about my resilience speaking and what I'm doing these days. You can also follow me on all the social media platforms. I do most of my work on Facebook. It's Nina Sossaman Pogue Author is my public page. And I'm also on uh, Instagram. I'm not very good on it, but I'm getting better. And I'm on Twitter uh, and LinkedIn, obviously. Fantastic. And we will most definitely uh, put links back to the social sites as well as a link back to ninasossamanpogue.com. Really also on Amazon and some of the other book sites as well. And it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast and have you share uh, your story, uh, you know, and your journey. And really this, this body of work, this idea of resilience and you know, this, this, the strategies that you are laying out for our listeners, especially today, we're all in the worst chapters of our life, at least at this point. Many of us are. So thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. It is my pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity to share. You stay safe. Fantastic. All right, folks, we have just been listening to Nina Sossaman Pope. She's been our guest today on the Success Insight podcast. She is an expert on resilience and researches and writes about how highly successful individuals and companies get from adversity to achievement. She's the author of the best selling book, This Is Not the End Strategies to Get Through the Worst Chapters of Your Life. And this nugget that she has shared, too, about the, the chapters in our book, our own unique book, and what we're going through right now is, as she is describing it, is just one chapter, and there's going to be a chapter after that and another one and another one. So do go out to the social sites, pick up a copy of her book. It's the available electronic version at a very reasonable rate. Uh, I got my copy out on Amazon for 99 cents, and uh, I'm excited uh, to really dive uh, into the book, you know, and just really kind of absorb more of what Nina has shared with us. So folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, go out there, be safe, practice social distancing. But, you know, even in this current situation that we're in, go out there and have a phenomenal day. Yes, you can have a phenomenal day. So we'll see you on the next episode of the Success Insight Podcast. Take care now. Success Insight is a production of Fox Coaching and First Story Strategies. Find us online, successinsightpodcast.com.